that day when we celebrate the discovery of the Christ child by the three magi on the screen, you'll see a, a, a Chinese artist depiction of, of these three bringing gifts to the Christ child. And so from today to the beginning of Lent, we're going to discover uh, a little bit about what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. We're going to discover the depth of who Jesus was and who Jesus calls us to be. How are we known and who are we called to be? These wise men, these, these magi, these, these scholars, these, these astrologers, whatever you want to call them, the lives of these three men were forever changed. You heard the story. They, they followed a star from the east to Jerusalem and they, they came to honor a new king. But then King Herod confronted them. King Herod wanted some intelligence. King Herod wanted to know who is this new king? Where is this new king? King Herod said, I want to honor him too. Yeah, right. Herod wanted to get rid of him. Herod wanted to get rid of him. The message, which is another version of the scriptures, uh, more of a paraphrase in today's language, shares the story in this way. Herod then arranged a secret meeting with the scholars from the East, pretending to be as devout as they were he got them to tell him exactly when the birth announcement star had appeared. And then he told them the prophecy about Bethlehem and said, Go find this child. Leave no stone unturned. As soon as you find him, send word. And I will join you at once in your worship. Instructed by the king, they set off. And then the star appeared again. The same star that they had seen in the eastern eyes. It led them on until it hovered over the place of the child. They could hardly contain themselves. They were in the right place. They had arrived at the right time. So what does all of this mean for us on this first Sunday of 2015? What does all of this mean uh, for us as, as followers of Jesus Christ? But one of the things I think it means is that we are known we are known by God's light. We are a people who are known by God's light. The white candle that you see on the, uh, here at the, on the Advent wreath is a candle that reminds us that, that we are people of light. You and me, we are people of light. And, and we are known by God's light. Jesus Christ came into the world Jesus Christ came into the world to, to lighten up those dark places in the world, to lighten up those dark places in our lives. And as followers of Jesus Christ, we are known by that light that has come into our lives. The message also says that the wise men, the, the scholars, the magi, they, they entered the, the house and they, they saw the child in the arms of Mary, the mother of Jesus. And overcome with joy, they, they knelt before the child and they worshipped him. The message also says that then they opened their luggage. That's probably a, a more contemporary word, a word that makes sense for us today. They opened their luggage and they presented gifts. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And in a dream, they were warned not to report back to Herod, so they worked out another route. They left the territory without being seen and returned to their own country. So, these wise men saw the light. These wise men saw the light of Christ. These wise men's lives were forever changed. These wise men knelt down in joy because of their discovery of the Christ child. What does this mean? We are called also as followers of Jesus Christ to a life of joy. We are called to be a people of joy. But, but what does that mean? Does it mean that we are never sad? Of course not. Of course not. We all experience sad moments in our lives. In fact, I, I know that there are several today who are experiencing particular sadness because of anniversaries of things and, and stuff like that. Yesterday.
yesterday I was at the Compion Funeral Home with, with Jicky, who is uh, running our slides today. We were there because uh, his grandmother had died, and there was a service uh, there at the funeral home for her. Were they sad? Of course they were sad. It was a sad time as we committed her body to its final resting place. But one of the things that happened that yesterday also that I think is reminiscent of who we are as Christian people is that that place was filled. That place was filled. And it was a joyful moment for me to, to see all those people surrounding Jiggy and, and his family and, and, and lift, lifting them up in the midst of their grief and in the midst of their pain. We are joyful because God is present with us in the midst of trouble. We are joyful that God is present with us in the midst of hurt and, and pain. We are joyful that we have been given the gift of this day. By the way, isn't it wonderful to see the sun? We, we are joyful that we have been given the gift of this day. And, and, and given the gift of this day with all of its opportunities but also all of its challenges. We have been given the gift of life for this particular day. And who are we known to be? We are known to be the people who are called, who are known, we are known by the light, and we are people who are called to joy. We are called to be a people of joy. And as we share God's light and God's joy in our life, with the people around us, that light will be spread throughout the world. As God's light and God's joy comes into our hearts and into our lives, we discover that the light of God can penetrate even the darkest night. So let's review. The light from a star led the wise men to a child in a manger. And, and this wise, these wise men were filled with joy when they discovered that this child was the Christ, the King. And, and we are called to be a joyful people. Joyful people because God's light shines in our life and, and through our lives and into, into the lives of others. But the challenge for us, the challenge for us is to claim that light and to hold on to that joy. That it might be so that God may be made known to the world around us. So I invite you during 2015, I, I invite you to, to let God's light infiltrate the dark places of your life. So here's what I'd like to invite you to do as an assignment this week. Uh, it's a very simple assignment, it's a personal assignment. I, I'd like to invite you in your own time of quietness to name those dark places in your life. And I'd like to invite you, as you name those dark places in your life, to make a commitment, to make a commitment to, to take God's to light, to, to allow God's light, to, to allow God's joy into those dark places. And as God's light and God's joy comes into those dark places, your life will be changed. Amen. Amen. Here at the invitation to the Lord's table, Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God in one another. Let us read together. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your law. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In
the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be with you. Let us share together in God's peace.